What do you mean you don't have to prove fault to get a divorce in Florida? What the heck is that? In Florida, you don't have to prove fault. Other states, some of them you do. You gotta prove fault. You gotta prove that the other side did something else that requires that, you know, the court says in their statute that is a reason for fault to go through with the divorce. So like an affair, not the only reason, but again, it comes up. So in other states, you do have to prove these things. You have to prove fault. Florida, completely different. So basically not having to prove one of these certain delineated areas of fault or fraud or anything else. It's, there's two things. First, residency. You gotta prove residency in Florida for a divorce. So that means that you've been a resident of the state of Florida for more than six months prior to filing the divorce. Usually people show a driver's license at that final uncontested hearing. And depending on your jurisdiction in Florida, some of them are now doing kind of initial, we call them as divorce lawyers, and I'm a Florida family law divorce attorney. Uh, my name is William S. Foley. Uh, this is a channel I have for Foley Divorce. You can subscribe if you're getting anything out of it or you're interested in some more videos. Uh, we try to post videos regularly and also our website has a lot of information and uh, the links are below uh, for all of our other social media and contact information. And like I said, a lot of counties are doing these initial jurisdiction orders at your first case management conference or if something comes up so that way you don't have to come back to court later. You know, and they get that testimony out of the way. And the easiest way to prove residency going back to that six month is showing your driver's license, showing your Florida driver's license. And again, there's other exceptions for different things. If there's military and the court's looking to see, okay, you filed for divorce on this date. What does the driver's license say? Does it go back six months prior to that? Or did you just get, you know, the, and sometimes people move out, they change their address. So a lot of times at the beginning of the case, we'll, we will personally ask for a copy of our client's driver's license, just in case there's no other issues, you know, during the course of the case. So that's the first part of it, residency. Big, important part of it. Second part is that the marriage is irretrievably broken, that there's nothing the court could do to fix the marriage. And this is important. And the courts want to make sure that you understand that if it's, would marital counseling work? Would kind of a trial separation, you know, kind of putting the case on abatement and holding off um, trial separations, reconciliations, whatever, whatever. The courts want to make sure, is this really what you want to do? So that's why a part of the petition is the petitioning party is, you know, that's one of the first things they state in there is that the marriage is irretrievably broken. And then the other side, when they file the answer, that's whether they admit or deny whether the marriage is irretrievably broken. So if you've said, and you've admitted that the marriage is irretrievably broken, then you've agreed. And that now is an irretrievably broken marriage. So it hit those two different functions. I'm only talking about divorce. Okay. And that's the difference. Sometimes people, they may want to get the divorce, but then they have all the other stuff. You know, you, 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 if you have children together, the court has to decide that. That's still under chapter 61. So this is 61.08. The court's looking at time sharing, a parenting plan, parental responsibility, then going into child support. Um, the court can look at alimony, can look at distribution of the assets and liabilities, can look at all these different issues, but that's different because sometimes either people that none of those things have anything to do with it and they just want to get a divorce. Um, sometimes they bifurcate the case, to just divorce first and deal with all the other issues set different, but it's, it's, it's separate. Okay. The entry of the divorce is separate and it only takes one, it takes one person to show that residency requirement. They've been a resident of the state of Florida for more than six months and to state that the marriage is irretrievably broken. Again, 
speak to an attorney if it's it's true they're you know we've in our practice filed you know various motions relating to you know counseling and things of that nature if it's warranted and if it's necessary and if 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 the circumstances are um, but again, the court's going to take a real world approach to it that a lot of times at the final hearing, they'll say, you know, if I sent you back to marital counseling, if I ordered that you go would that assist, is there anything the court could do to assist or is the marriage truly irretrievably broken? And if it's irretrievably broken, then you've met that second part of the standard the chapter 61 of the Florida statute looks at, again, residency, number one, and number two, whether or not the marriage is irretrievably broken. So those are the two major components, and that is why Florida is a no-fault state. And thank you for watching.